obviously uh, humor is pretty sarcastic everything together and you have the entire room in splits and we really had a great time uh, going through that entire experience you shared a lot of experiences about your writing as well and that was my first experience uh, with you so i would have thought that oh no i, I also i have also read kobar blue your translated kobar blue and that is one of my favorite books so um i would have thought you know I, at that point i thought okay so uh, cherry can write something uh, i mean translate something that kind of gets uh, to the core of it like um, without making it um, too much less getting it to the i'm repeating myself i'm sorry but it only means that i think i'm telling the truth because it's not a story that has changed in the last year i think eight years since the book has been out i think uh, mm the book was the first book i ever started writing you know in the sense that uh, we all have a book inside us when we start writing something that we a story that we want to tell and i don't know that i ever made a conscious decision that i was going to talk about this or not talk about it or you know but i think it's somehow that seemed to be my story that seemed to be what i had i could talk about and i could talk about it without uh, uh without too much anxiety because i think the family that i came from um uh, was plagued by mental illness on many levels uh there were two sisters that i had who both had mental problems as well and uh, so it was part of the family uh the family narrative was about mental illness uh you know you knew that people were in psychiatric wards you knew that someone had had uh, a series of shocks you knew someone had tried to kill herself you knew these things were happening it came, it came to you in really stupid ways like you know um in the 8th standard there was a play and it was the kind of play in which everyone had to be dressed up because it was set in the 18th or 19th century and the teacher was very clear if your mother was not going to make you a costume you didn't get a role in the play so i didn't get a role in the play because my mother wasn't going to make me a role in the costume uh, make me a costume she couldn't stitch she didn't want to stitch she thought stitching was boring or uh, she could do a button or two when she felt like it but she didn't stitch and so other people did the roles in the play and i remember thinking this is not fair and the world is totally unfair and it it was a what's the word it was an epic tragedy in, in the eighth stand today you look back and you think well, i was and you also look back and realize that there were no perfect mothers there were no ideal parents there were there, there were people who, who were normal and that no i had to take certain liberties and one of those liberties was trimming my family and our experiences and putting it into a book and that is what i call craft yeah rojita does that just happening if you go solemnly to your notebook and you say i will now shift the universe you're going to write something that sounds like khalil gibran or something on a bad day but khalil gibran on a good day can be very good uh, so and what i'm saying is uh, you become portentous you become pompous and this is a masculine thing we tend to have this pot pomposity portentousness bone that uh, you know we want to uh, define the world and explain it to other people so i think when you sometimes you throw away your your casual that can work much better anyway so i'm saying i'm i'm, I'm already tying myself in knots i'm saying this uh, writing is not the work the real work is rewriting and the realist work is editing making giving it shape i am always deeply suspicious of something that looks beautiful the first time i've written it it's probably something that makes me happy because it is uh, it sounds like good writing and that's not what it is. if it sounds like good writing it probably is it it has to sound like jerry and jerry sometimes writes well but that beautiful strange word there is similitude does that person sound right if they sound right you've done your job and if you have to use a four letter word you use it if you don't you don't so diagnosis somebody was you know at some point talking about depression schizophrenia manic depressive you know multiple things so i can uh, imagine uh, this is exactly what the families many families go through uh, yeah and 
yeah, these are, I mean, I'm, I'm just checking my note, what else. So these are some of the things that I have, you know, taken from the book. And, and of course, you know, it just helped me. I, I've never lived in Bombay. I've just gone and visited Bombay, you know, you know once in a while. And my husband has lived in Bombay. He keeps talking about Bombay and Bombay family. And I always him I like, I love, uh, you know, Delhi much better than Bombay. But I could actually say, you know, uh, say to her out whatever he's been talking about, my my friends, relatives, family, friends who've been talking about a Goan uh, family, especially the Goan Catholic families living their, their lives. It should just be closer to the time. For the simple reason that the book, ever since I have edited and committed to other, has left my shell and is traveling, <laughs> traveling by right now, after traveling, after. Uh, Meeting so many readers, now she is in the hands of my granddaughter who is doing psychology. So, but one thing I should say uh, when a writer writes about uh, something from his own perspective, as a narrator, then there are many limitations. I don't know uh, whether it's very will agree with you. It's very difficult to write about your own experiences. But here you are, I can understand now how difficult it was to uh, write a book of this kind. Um, can you write something about your, from your own perspective as a narrator? Then generally you are asked a question. Is this worth experience? Is this about you? And I, I sometimes feel frustrated. I'm talking about a writer because sometimes you feel frustrated because you have used your own experience, your own um, your own narrative, but at the same time you have fictionalized it. I don't know how much Gary has fictionalized uh, the entire uh, your experience or other your uh, narration. Then uh, it is really difficult. Jerry, do you find embarrassed when you are asked this is a novel? But then when, when you are asked about whether this is your own story. But do you know the never that picture and much wider and much much more uh, vibrant than what we can write. Like for instance at this point in time maybe you're sweating and maybe um, you're uh, curing the rain outside or maybe you're smelling the uh, petrichor or maybe you're, you're feeling ill because you had a uh, too heavy a lunch. In your narrative of this moment none of these may feature or one of them may feature because that is the one that you want to use to set off a certain thought process in the in the reader's head. But the, the vibrancy of lived experience is never going to be captured in space. Right? That's why we live. That's why we read also because we want to enrich that, that lived experience. We agree. We want more. So I think you're, you're quite right. I don't think you can write about your own experiences. You have to step away and you have to say, what is it that my character would be thinking at this point? What is it that my character would say at this point? Not what did I say at that point? Because what you said at that point may well be the truth. It may well have its own truth. But now you are looking for aesthetic truth. And aesthetic truth is different from lived truth. At the end of the day, uh, your distance, your, your most successful distancing mechanism is when you send the book to the reader. Yeah. Because then you are put down. Each one of you, when you encountered the book, I was not there. I was not standing next to you. Now it is your book and your reading of the book. You made it a book actually. It was not a book until you read it. And then you made it a book for which I thank you. Uh, up to that time, it's just words on a page that I said and I thought and I felt and I imagined and I, I dreamed. Nothing of that makes any sense. It's only when you begin to read it and it has an effect on you that it becomes the book. Right? So my distinct yeah. mechanism is finally successful when I close the file and I send it off to the publisher and the publisher puts it out again and someone reads it. Up to that time it is jigar ka tukra. It is part, part of my heart. It's, it's part of my gut. It's my child. You know? And uh, and so Criticism of it hurts more than criticism of me. <laughs> it's really stupid. At some level, you never distance yourself enough and successfully. At some level, you have to distance yourself uh, in order to be able to write the next one.
because otherwise every time there is a criticism you will fail you will you will stop you will be you will be uh, hamstrung let me tell you about chinta had already come up uh, come out so i didn't give so much uh, yeah, you know uh, so much of attention to the story but now when i read it jerry it's such an eye opener and really i feel you have done a wonderful job of taking out a goan story in some sense and at the same time relating it to your personal story these little nuggets of information like you know uh, the grandfather who was a cook then the whole migration of the father uh, um, yeah, that is whom from goa to bombay setting up life in bombay meeting a girl setting up home and then within that home there is this whole inversion of masculinity and femininity you know you have a uh, whom who becomes the caregiver and you have m who actually takes on a very masculine stance Um, also because of a lot of uh, health issues overriding her, which women in a normal household don't really say you don't talk about sex you don't talk about fire for fuck you don't talk about you know things with that your children and she does all that and at the same time the other very interesting thing was this young boy narrator who narrates the story and the impact of all that happening around him on his own life on his own identity on his own confidence of growing up as a adult you know there are several points which you bring up this very well right from the time that m just walks out of the house with this little blue eyed boy and she meets a stranger and then the father has to intervene quash up the whole thing with feel those emotions and i remember having felt those emotions that's the darkness so the right to write for catharsis is already going to be disappointed fundamentally yeah um so it was and i think uh, writing can be therapeutic but it is not the only thing that is therapeutic if you want um, to be kind of like uh, healed by writing you got to sort of uh, you can't rely only on writing it's got to be like you know you got to take care of yourself you got to eat right you got to exercise right you've got to relate to other people you've got to be thoughtful you've got to do a lot of things to be to be comfortable not uh, to be happy <laughs> or whatever it is you're looking for whatever whatever sense of healing you want it's got to be a lot of things it can't just be one thing it can't just be writing in some in a book that in the new novel that i'm writing which is set in the 1980s and asking yourself did they say those that did they use that kind of uh, of uh, our language then did they use that idiom then is that a modern idiom now and uh, tanvi says cobalt blue is also something worth reading apparently it's being made into a show film that's exciting yeah tachin kundalkar is uh, the original author who is also a film director so it's his baby and he's making it and you know uh, i remember once talking to him on stage and very many people would stand up in the audience and say you know why isn't cobalt blue film here then he'd say because as soon as you show that character with whom both of them fell in love brother and sister fall in love as soon as you see his face the film fails yeah um because all of you love the books so <laughs> chacha <laughs> thank you very much glad you yeah. made the time for us and no no it was uh, my pleasure jerry just a last uh, thing that happened in yeah. fact today afternoon before the book club started the meeting uh, i have a college uh, group and uh, they were discussing about the suicide that was committed by sushant singh and one of the guys there started saying uh, that you know it was a choice that he made and he should not have uh, taken that step and i the only thing i told him was please read uh, jerry's book and you will get an idea into what it is to be or understand what it is to uh, deal with and be a person who has a mental illness so i have uh, and he has said okay fine i will immediately get it right because he just couldn't get the point that we were trying to make so you are you know the only thing i want to add to that uh, rujita yeah. is imagine yeah. this we all all of us yeah. have so much difficulty being ourselves just yeah. trying to be ourselves actors and writers also want to be other people because when i am writing dialogue between a man and a woman and pitching between being a man and being a woman when yeah. sushant was 
actually acting and act, uh, role. He was trying to be someone else while still trying to be himself. Imagine the strain of that on this guy. Yeah. So uh, I think your young uh, your young student is probably uh, unconsciously harsh because he doesn't he hasn't thought about these things. Forgive him. It's all right. They get. I mean, uh, life teaches all of us to be a lot more gentle with ourselves and with others. Yeah. No, but uh, that's true. No, yeah, this is not a college student. This guy is like in his oh. uh, 30s. Yeah, so he was he was very uh, uh, immature about the way that he was talking about it. You know.